Just looking at the standouts on the day, Mr. Price up at 3.1% today, ShopRite up 2.8%, MassMart rallying by 2.7%, TrueWiz up 2.6%. So there we go, all the retailers back in vogue once again today. Looking at the other end of the market, uh, we had a sell-off in gold stocks today, the likes of Anglo Gold Ashanti down 4%, uh, just over 251 Rand on the day, Gold Fields down 2.6%. That gold price has been selling off, but interestingly enough, of course, you've got the Rand Gold price, which of course, would uh, be a cushioning factor to a degree that a weaker rand. And just looking at the overall market on the day uh, and how that translated into uh, the Aussie, uh, slightly softer today, down by just over a tenth of a percent, 40,538 points. Just pulling back uh, from that uh, record high uh, that we hit yesterday, Wayne McCurry from Momentum Investments is still with me at the desk and uh, time now to check in on the local market. So Wayne, uh, what are your thoughts right now on what we're seeing from the market? Because no. I said a sell-off in gold stocks. Yeah, I mean, there was a big sell-off in gold stocks. You can see the gold price has come down and quite rightly so. World fears, tensions, uncertainty, it's definitely less than what it was. So the gold price should in fact be falling and I would view that as being quite normal. Yeah. As you correctly mentioned, the weaker range should be, should be giving some sort of cushion to the gold shares. But they took an awful beating here today. And mm -hmm. then the retailers were quite strong. But this is not the dawn of a new age in retail shares here. They've just fallen so much they had to have some sort of bounce. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I just wouldn't be going back into them quite yet. I think there's a little bit more weakness to come there before they represent. Is that thinking right now at Momentum on no, the retail space? But I mean, that's the thinking all over. That's mm -hmm. why they're going down. In South Africa, and of yeah. course, foreigners. Foreigners are bigger. Yeah, so foreigners, big holders. Foreigners are the sellers of the retail shares. Mm -hmm. Anglo-American coming out with their update today. And just looking at that uh, overall, a rise in coal, copper and diamond output. Uh, the uh, fall, obviously, in platinum. I mean, mm. that fall, 29% in production for the yeah. quarter. Iron ore coming down 19%. And iron ore, a big profit driver for the company. Yeah, but I mean, the company's already, the share price has already been punished. We all know this. This yeah. wasn't, none of this year, okay, maybe the copper actually did a bit better than expected. But yeah. none of this year was, was news to us, eh? that, that iron ore and platinum <laughs> is down in production because we all, we all know this. Hopefully, this is now the worst that Anglos is going to have for a little while. And in the next quarter, it starts to look better and they start to make more profits and start to get production up again and going. But I think there's still a rocky road for Anglos. They've got not only the South African problem. Look, I don't think Kumba is long term a problem uh, in, in respect of in unrest in that. But unfortunately, Amplats could be because all the focus is on is on Amplats now. So that might still, uh, uh, you know, be negative for the company for a couple of quarters still. Mm -hmm. And we don't but know how that's going to But they've still got to sort out the South American story. This is, this is bigger. Yeah. Is, that's, that's big capex. That. You know, by and large, the, the, the Amplat story is not as big economically, or the, the result of the Amplat story is not as big economically as South America. This is a big one. And, and they, they didn't give any updates on that today. Yeah. They didn't talk about the actual <laughs> cost. Everyone's speculating and also talking about mm. the impact of a potential write-down. Now, there is a right down. It's not potential. There is a right down. Yeah. Exactly the same. But how big? We don't know. Oh, well, okay. First of all, let's go back a step here. Anyone who thought there wasn't going to be shaft closures and job retrenchment at Amplats was just not living on the same planet as we were living on. So I, w I was amazed at how everyone was astonished when this announcement was made. Mm -hmm. It was coming. Same as the right down that's coming there. Now, I think they paid $10 billion for it. They've pumped another six billion into it, they're probably going to write off six to eight billion dollars on it. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it's going to be a big write down, but by and large, the market knows that. I mean, the market's not stupid. And, and as you know, say, that's what you're seeing in the share well. price. Yeah, and you're seeing it in the share price. Baked so, in but there will, there will definitely be a write down there. Let's just look at the market, uh, pulling back from the record high yesterday. Mm, bit, yeah. And, uh, you know, just looking at what's happening uh, internationally right now, I mean, the S&P 500, uh, just slightly below 1,500 mm. points. But when it hits that point, People feel optimistic, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, and of course that's that was a the strong previous signal. high. I think the previous high was 1550 in 2002. So for the long, you know, for the last 10 years, you now at long last might make a little bit of capital profit. Remember, our market's up 400, 500 percent since 2002 in dollars, not to just not just rands. So I mean, we've had a fantastic market here in comparison to the U.S. market, but the U.S. market is actually quite cheap. I mean, their dividend yields high in relation to their history mm -hmm. in comparison to our market it's also very high so if you're an sa investor and you're a bit worried about the rand and you've had the run in our market it's happened it's not as though it's, it's, not as though it's about to happen it has already happened 
and you can go and buy good quality shares overseas at a very good dividend yield and a fair price, you know, why not take a bit of money overseas? I mean, just talk, talking about uh, what the markets are likely to do, Goldman Sachs CEO is saying uh, the U.S. environment is very good, yes. and inverted commas, the stock market has rallied to multi-year highs, and uh, also saying people are under-invested. Yeah. So what people, but basically saying there's still more money to move into the market. There will definitely be. What the problem was, the dividend yield has been high, on global markets for a while, but people were worried about the sustainability of earnings because of the state of the underlying economy. Now, if you're an investor and you say, I can earn 2% on a government bond, well, I can go and get three, three and a half, and if I buy wisely, maybe I can even get 4% dividend yield. I mean, it is one of those classic no-brainers. You know, as long as you buy a company that's going to sustain its dividend and its profits aren't under threat and it's not going bankrupt and it's a good company, mm -hmm. Anyone would rather buy a dividend and get a 3% yield than buy a bond and get a 2% yield. So I think, that I think a lot of money will flow in and I think the US market is going to clearly outperform our market this year, specifically in dollar terms. We are talking about that uh, earlier today and looking at uh, talking to a technical analyst about some of the signals he's seeing and uh, he cautioned around where the market's trading right now and basically saying they're seeing a pull pullback and of course if you're trading yeah. in South Africa. I know that could quite easily happen. I doubt in the extreme if we're going to get a serious correction. I mean I say serious I mean 20%. There's just too much liquidity around interest rates are just far too low for that to happen. But a pullback easily can happen. We can easily in this next quarter, next two quarters, see a minus five or a minus 10% in our market quite comfortably, in fact.